Hello viewers, in this video, we are going to discuss two-phase locking protocol. Two-phase locking protocol, it ensures conflict serializability by allowing transactions to acquire and release locks in two phases. Those two phases are known as growing phase and shrinking phase. Uh, in growing phase, transactions may obtain required all the required locks. And when it is in growing phase, they are not permitted to release any of its locks. Okay. And the very important point to be discussed here is that the point when the transaction acquired its final lock, it is known as lock point. Okay. From that lock point onwards, it can transition from growing phase into sh shrinking phase. Okay. When it enters into the shrinking phase, it may release the locks. And when it is in shrinking phase, it is not permitted to acquire any more locks. Okay. And according to two-phase locking protocol, serializability order for the transactions are obtained by arranging them according to their lock point. So let us take an example and uh, learn either two-phase locking protocol concept is applied or not. Okay. Here in this uh, schedule, a transaction, two transactions are there, T1 and T2. Uh, here we can observe transaction T1, it is in growing phase because it uh, uh, acquired all the locks um, in the beginning itself. Okay, so uh, from the step 0 to 2, it acquired all the locks. So, uh, and afterwards, it do not acquire any of the locks. So, since it is uh, the, its final lock, this point is known as lock point. Okay, so then after this point, it moves from growing phase into shrinking phase. Okay, now the transaction it is in shrinking phase uh, from the uh, step 3 to 6. Okay, from the step 3 to 6 it is in uh, shrinking phase. Whereas uh, coming to transaction T2, uh, it is in growing phase from uh, up to uh, step 5. Okay, then uh, this is the uh, last lock, right? So this is the lock point for this transaction. And from this point onwards, it will transition uh, into uh, shrinking phase. So we can notice here in the shrinking phase, it releases the lock. Okay. Um, at step 5, it appeared its uh, lock, uh, final lock, right? So that is what known as its lock point. So uh, let us now uh, discuss about the serializability order of this transaction. Since um, here, transaction T1 acquired its uh, final lock at uh, step 2 and T2 acquired its final lock at step 5. Um, so, ser uh, serializability order can be made T1 followed by T2. So, usually it is made according to the um, order how it got its uh, final lock points, right? So, accordingly, since T1 got its uh, lock point first, uh, then followed by the T2 got, so serializability order can be made in this way T1 followed by T2. So, if the transactions are executed in this serial order, that output and the concurrent execution of the transaction T1 and T2, both will produce the equivalent result and will be consistent. Okay, let us discuss a problem uh, cascading rollback that is not resolved by normal two-phase locking protocol. Here in this example, three transactions are there, T5, T6, T7. Okay, so all the three are in um, two-phase locking protocol uh, because we can observe here T5 acquired all its locks in um, uh, growing phase. That is initially itself it acquired all its lock and uh, it releases its locks in growing uh, shrinking phase only. So um, so we can say that it is in uh, it follows two-phase locking protocol. Similarly, you can notice the same here also. Two-phase locking protocol is applied. Okay. Uh, here the problem is that uh, if the transaction T5 fails after unlocking of uh, after unlocking of A, okay. So what happens after unlock of A? T6 immediately appears the exclusive lock on A and it performs read and write operation on it and unlocks it and uh, immediately T7 uh, gets shared lock on A. Okay, this is what the sequence according to the schedule. But if T5 it fails after the uh, release of lock on A. Okay, so it has to be rolled back, right? Field transaction need to be rolled back, right? 
So this rollback of T5 leads to the rollback of T6 and T7 also. So this this problem is known as cascading rollback. Okay. So this cascading rollback is not resolved by even after applying two-phase locking protocol. Okay. In order to uh, overcome this problem, we can apply uh, strict two-phase locking protocol. Um, uh, where exclusive locks are held until the transaction co successfully commits or abhors in order to avoid the cascading rollback. Okay. So this two-phase locking protocol is one of the two-phase locking protocol and another protocol is known as regress two-phase locking protocol. So in this regress two-phase locking protocol, all locks including exclusive lock as well as shared lock, all locks are kept uh, until the successful commit or abort of the uh, transaction. But when we apply this regress to phase locking protocol, we could not achieve high concurrency because that will make the transaction uh, equivalent to a serial schedule only. Okay. Then uh, let us uh, discuss about the lock conversion concept. Uh, before uh, going to learn about lock conversion, let us um, discuss the problem uh, why we need to apply lock conversion technique okay now here if you take two transactions t8 and t9 here t8 it reads the um, data items a1 a2 a3 followed by an and at last it uh, performs write operation on a1 okay but it first um, it it wants to do read operation on a1 and at last it wants to do write operation on a1 and uh, similarly, uh, coming to T9, it wants to do read operation on A1, A3, and it uh, wants to display the result of A1 plus A3. But if we apply two-phase locking protocol on this schedule, how it will be uh, made? First, it has to occur the uh, exclusive lock on A1 because it performs read as well as write operation on A1, right? So it has to occur exclusive lock on A1. Then it can perform the read operation. Then it has to occur uh, shared lock on A2. And um, followed by that, at last, um, it has to perform a uh, write operation. Okay? So all the required locks it uh, occurred in the growing phase and uh, it, uh, it has to release the locks in shrink to phase. Right? So first it uh, releases the uh, lock on A1. So when it releases, then only transaction T9 can acquire a shared lock on A1 in order to perform read operation on A1. Okay, so uh, yeah, so to acquire shared lock on A1, transaction T9 has to wait until the completion of all these uh, operations of T8. Okay, it uh, reduces the uh, concurrency of the transactions. Okay, so this is the major problem. In order to improve the concurrency of the uh, transaction execution, we can go for uh, applying lock conversion technique. Lock conversion, it is used along with two-phase locking protocol. According to two-phase locking protocol, first phase is growing phase, right? Um, then second phase is shrinking phase, right? So, um, very similar to uh, two-phase locking protocol, here also, during the growing phase, transaction can acquire shared lock and uh, if required, uh, exclusive lock also can be acquired. And one more thing, in addition to these two uh, locks, one more operation also is possible, upgrade operation, which converts the shared lock into ex exclusive lock. Okay, and in the second phase, uh, transactions may can release the locks, right? So it can release the shared lock, exclusive lock, and also downgrade operation, that is exclusive locks can be uh, downgraded into shared lock. So, in addition to the releasing of shared and exclusive lock um, in growing phase, upgrade also can be done. Whereas, coming to the second uh, phase, in addition to the release of shared lock and exclusive lock, um, the downgrade operation also can be done. Okay. If you look at this example, if we apply this lock conversion in the uh, previous example, what we discussed now, um, here you see uh, the transaction T, uh, TH wanted to do uh, read as well as write on A1 write, but initially it wants to do read operation. At last only it wants to do write operation. So instead of uh, getting acquiring the exclusive lock, lock directly, um, it uh, lock conversion technique, it permits the transaction to acquire the shared lock only initially. Okay, 
then uh, you can notice here when it appears the shade lock uh, immediately transaction 9 also can appear the shade lock on a1 because shade and shade lock on a1 are compatible so in this way uh, t9 also parallelly is permitted to execute and finally whenever the transaction t8 would like to do write operation using the upgrade uh, instruction um, this shade lock on a1 can be upgraded into exclusive lock on a1 okay. so uh, with the application of uh, this lock convention we could able to achieve high concurrency okay. uh, students in this video we learned about two phase locking protocol if you find this video useful to you kindly subscribe this channel thanks for watching